Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are going to be going through a bunch of mini reviews. So there have been so many new releases recently and I've picked up quite a few different kind of like random things, you know, not necessarily an entire collection of things, but pieces of them such as the new Viseart Le Marais palette. We have the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. So that has been redone. We have the new uh, Laura Mercier Lip Crayon. We have the Victoria Beckham, you know, the jewel eyeliners. So we're gonna go through each of these things. First, let's start off with the Chanel concealer. So I picked up the Chanel Sublimage Corrector Yo, and I have shade 02. And I just wanna show you, you know, when you open this up, and I will show you sort of like, not really an unboxing, but sort of when I open this, so you can see what it looks like the first time, but there's one of those little plastic lids on here. Notice this little tab here. So this is heavier duty plastic than what you might get on some of these containers. Oh, it's actually, it had a little suction there, but it actually needs to be pushed back down in order to put the lid on. So if you're trying to put the lid on and that is not pushed down, it just will not screw in all the way. I have to say, I have mixed feelings about this little lid. It's definitely helping keep the product fresher longer and so forth, you know, it, it kind of seals that in, but it's messy to take on and off. I always get a little bit of spillage on the sides. So let's take a look at how this was when I opened it, as well as a demo of application for this. The Chanel Sublimage Le Corrector Yo is an incredible concealer. I actually really like this. It has a very high price point, it's 95 US dollars. It does have a decent shade range. It's made in France, there's a one year shelf life. It comes with a little spatula. This was originally on the Chanel website, but you couldn't really select shades, they had a little glitch. So they actually took it down and now it says coming soon. But it is available for purchase if you go to or call a boutique. They do have it available, they're allowed to sell it. There's just been some sort of glitch with the website. And I believe the original launch date was actually November 1st. So I think they're just kind of holding it until then online, but it will be available then. It is a permanent product, so it will be available at other retailers as well. Now, one of the things that makes this concealer a little bit different than some of the lower priced options is that this one actually has the intense vanilla planifolia water. And this is in their sublimage products. It's actually a really difficult ingredient to obtain and to sort of process. It's typically done by hand and it provides a smoothing, deep puffing and firming benefit when it's included in skincare and makeup. And that's one of the big ingredients, one of their like key ingredients in the Sublimage line. And I find that it really does work very well with my skin to just, you know, it, it just seems better. If I use those products day after day after day, my skin definitely ends up looking a little bit smoother and clearer. I don't know if it really depuffs or firms, but it does look more firm temporarily at least. Another ingredient that they have is cedar extract. And this is actually something that is there to target dark circles for a longer term impact. So it's supposed to be more than just a temporary effect. My circles, you know, they're not super dark. So it's hard for me to really judge how that is, you know, actually performing. And by the way, this does come with a brush. And in the first demo that I showed you, I did use the brush that it came with. I don't like the brushes, so I actually prefer the Sonia G Fusion concealer brushes. The soft concealer is probably my favorite brush to use with this, but the brush that it comes with is just a little bit flimsy in my opinion. I prefer something a little bit firmer. This texture is about, it's like a medium whipped texture, and I think it's really nice to use. In today's demo, you can see I actually let it sit for a minute before going back and blending it out. So I let it dry a little bit and that actually helps whenever you do that with a concealer, it helps increase your coverage. So you can kind of see a little bit of a difference there, but I don't think for most purposes, it's really necessary with this particular concealer. Now, according to Chanel, this concealer is supposed to correct without creasing, illuminate your eye look and target dark circles. 
And combined with light particles and pigments, it's supposed to correct wrinkles, fine lines, and dark circles. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by correct wrinkles, but definitely on a temporary basis, you can see that things are a little bit like plumper and smoother looking. So overall, I think this is an incredible concealer and I am really enjoying it. Very glad that I picked this up. And I have been testing this for, I, I don't know, it's probably about a week now and it really lasts all day without creasing. I really have, you know, no noticeable, you know, gathering of product or anything like that after a long day. I have had this on once for 20 hours, still didn't really see any major difference. There was a, a tiny bit, but nothing major, nothing that, you know, I would call, call them out for. It's definitely performs well, it looks great, and I'm happy with the color range because I don't always have an option with concealers that I like that are light enough. So this is actually one, I usually use concealer underneath foundation partly for color correctness, but this one I don't have to. I can use this on top or below and it blends beautifully with other foundations and so forth as well, Chanel or other brands. So I have to say this concealer, again, fantastic. The only thing I don't love about it is this brush. I'd rather just not be included and have a cheaper price point, but you can see how bendy it is and you can see it's angled, which is great. You know, get the size works well, but I would prefer something a little bit denser because although this will spread out the concealer, I feel like it's not gonna look as seamless unless you use your fingers or a firmer, denser brush. So I just, I don't love this included brush and I don't love the packaging. I think it looks nice, but I would rather have a different type of application method versus, you know, a, a little jar because for one, I keep making a mess with that little cover, which I feel like I can't throw away because I actually tried to wipe off all of the excess, put it in the, the pot so I could get rid of the cover. And it's just, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, you need to, there's still too much product on there that I feel like I would be wasting. So, you know, I'm not sold on that part, but those are like really minor things. It's totally worth it. And I would buy this concealer again because it's that good. Now, I just wanted to compare it briefly with the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Concealer. And by the way, this in the Chanel, this is 02. So the shade on this is gonna be a little bit more like pink. It's cool, uh, you know. And then in the Tom Ford, I have zero on zero. And this is going to be whiter, more, it's more of like a white with beige tones to it. I think these are both great concealers. They're both very high price tags. Do I have a preference between the two? It's really hard to say because I think they're fantastic. I do prefer the delivery method of the Tom Ford over the jar and the Chanel. However, the Tom Ford, you can see, I've cleaned this off before, but it just, there's no way to not get stuff there. And yeah, so they both have pros and cons with the packaging. The Tom Ford is a little bit more of an illuminating finish, whereas the Chanel is illuminating more so because of the color and you know the finish is actually gonna be more matte. The Shade and Illuminate has just a little bit more radiance to it, but I think they're both fantastic. They work well, and texturally, the Chanel's gonna be a bit moussier, a little bit of a softer formula, whereas the Tom Ford just has a little bit more of a putty-like texture. Definitely not a putty formula, but just more putty in it compared to the Chanel. While I was letting the concealer today kind of sit and dry a little bit under my eyes, I put the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate in 0.5 on the right side of my face. So I applied this to the right side so that we could cover that with foundation so we can kind of see what the difference is, whether you use this on top or underneath foundation. So you can see here in the demos that I have it on the right side, under the foundation, and on the left side, I went in and put it on top of foundation. Now for foundation today, I used the Clay de Poe, the foundation. I will have a full length video on that and the Guerlain foundations very soon. I'm almost done with it, but I love that foundation. It's fantastic. And in my opinion, I personally prefer using the shade and illuminate underneath the foundation. 
but you definitely get more impact on top. So let's take a look at a few comparisons. I'd love to know which one you prefer though, on top or underneath. So please let me know in the comments. And the Tom Ford Shane Illuminate Contour Duo is made in Canada. It's 15 grams of product. There is no post-it like expiration date on here, but just wanted to give you that information. All right, so here's the shade and illuminate. This is the uh, contour duo in intensity 0.5. And this product, you know, has been out in the past, but they have redone it. I'm not sure exactly what they did to change it. I actually do not have the original, never did, but I have heard from other people who've used it that the original formula was a bit dewier on the skin than this one. This will kind of set down and it's not that it has a matte texture or anything, but it's not gonna have a tackiness or stickiness. You can feel some silicone in the formula and it just sort of blends out very nicely. It gives you a little bit of a glow without any like dewy texture on the skin. Now, as for the Illuminate here, I'm just gonna show a couple comparisons here. This is the Westman Atelier Lit Up Stick in Lit. This one actually is a little bit more like iridescent. There's some blue and some pink in there but you are gonna get about the same amount of shine or shimmer. Another example, this is the Victoria Beckham Reflex Stick. And I'm assuming they're bringing out more shades since they gave this one a shade name, but this is pearl. You can see this is gonna be more golden, but essentially this Illuminate shade is going to work, you know, just like any of those balmy, dewy you know, highlighter sticks that you can get or, you know, compacts. And I think it's a really nice product, but I have to say, I actually like the fact that it doesn't remain dewy on the skin because I can use it on top of things without feeling it on my skin. Now, as for the contour shade, it's a little bit warm for me. Like I prefer it slightly cooler. This is Westman Atelier Contour Stick in Biscuit. You can see it's a little bit cooler. There's not quite as much gold as there is in the Tom Ford. Uh, but it blends out very well. It performs really well. Again, because of those golden undertones though, I do prefer to use it underneath foundation. And I also wanted to share with you the Burberry Essentials Glow Palette. This is, what I don't contour too frequently, but when I do, this is my go-to shade. Looks super dark, but let me show you how this blends out here. Look at that. So you can see this actually has some red in it which works really well for skin like mine that has some natural redness in it. I actually have neutral undertones, but I do have those red overtones in there, those cooler overtones, which you know can definitely alter how things look. Now, texturally, I would say that the Tom Ford is closer in texture to the Burberry, but the Burberry is a little bit of a drier texture. It doesn't have as much of that silicone feeling to it. And yeah, I, I think that's the major difference. So overall though, I have to say, I do really like the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Contour Duo. It's definitely something I will be using, be using it underneath foundation typically, but is it like a game changer product? For me, it's not. For people who like to contour a lot, it probably is. And I think it's a really nice product, but I do think since this originally came on the market, we've had a lot of other products that you can use to get the same kind of look, the same kind of finish for a cheaper price tag. So it's all about what you're looking for, whether you want it in like a duo compact like this and so forth. But I do think it's a nice product and I will continue to use it. So next let's move on to the cheeks. So after doing the demo with the shade and illuminate and putting that on top, I did cover everything with foundation to have kind of a more clean base for this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette. But I do have an additional demo where you can see these shades on their own. And so I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But first, let me just go ahead and swatch these. And I'm gonna swatch both blushes first. So we've got kind of this, you know, does blush here that's a little bit more earthy and I apologize I actually guess something something was on the corner of my palette there and then we have more of a brighter pink but you can see that the pink is going to be a bit of a warm pop of pink so highlighters we have this gold shade that has just a little bit, uh, it's like a peachy gold. So it's gonna be a warmer gold, but there's a, it's like a peachy pink in there. So there's still a little pink. And then we have more of this warm 
rosy gold here. So definitely more rose than rose gold, but it's gonna be a warm pink highlight. Now as for the Charlotte Tilbury face palette, this is the first one of these that I've ever purchased. And there are two different color stories that came out this year. There's the fair medium and then there's a deeper version. So this is the lighter one. We have four shades that are 3.8 grams each. This is made in Italy and you have an 18 month shelf life. Now I have used this several times now with different brushes and the blushes in here are a bit firmer in the pan. So if you want a really soft wash of color, you can definitely use something soft like I used today, a squirrel hairbrush. But if you want something a bit more pigmented, buff it in, I would definitely go with goat hair and perhaps like a denser brush. I really like the Refer 37 that just came out, 50% off on uh, Refer right now in their brush bundle. Um, but also like the Sonia G Classic Cheek is another one that I really like for these or the Omnia Gold. So those are all brushes that are a little bit more dense and you know, the fibers are goat hair. So they're going to pick up the product more easily than squirrel. So if you want something a little bit more colorful, more pigment on the cheek with one swipe, those would be the ones that I would recommend. And the highlighters, you know, they actually come up very easily with any type of brush. So you can get a very soft application with a fluffy fan brush, or, you know, I use the squirrel hair highlighting brush today and they, I got plenty, plenty of product up there. Now I do think that these are going to give you a really nice soft glow. You can definitely make them more impactful if you want, but you know, I really like them. Overall, I think the colors in here and the formulas and finishes all perform really well. I'm very happy with this palette and I think it's gonna be a great palette to use all year. So definitely not just something that screams holiday. It's really a great year round product. So as for the packaging, I personally really like this. You can see that it's pink, but you can see like some blue and purple and green kind of mixed in there as well. I think it's really pretty. I do have a few comparisons, so let's look at this. First up, we have the Gucci Blush in 05 Rosy Beige, and this kind of made me think a little bit of the uh, like lighter, dustier shade in the palette, but you can see that the Charlotte Tilbury is going to be a peachier version here, and the Gucci actually has a touch of mauve in it. I also wanted to look at a couple of Pat McGrath blushes. This one here is Divine Rose, and you can see that this one here is going to be a little bit rosier. Again, it has a little bit more mauve in it than the Charlotte Tilbury. Next to the Charlotte Tilbury, it makes the Charlotte Tilbury look very peach, very warm. Then we have the Cherish shade from Pat McGrath. And this is going to be cooler in tone, but I do think that, you know, these will still give you kind of like, if you're looking for a cooler tone option, this combination here is going to kind of fill the same needs as these two shades in the Charlotte Tilbury. Another one I wanted to look at is the Chantecaille Radiant Chic Duo in Rose. And let's take a look at this pink here. I'm gonna put this one right here so you can kind of see that. This is gonna be a warmer pink, but it, it's not, it, it's like brighter than the pink in the Charlotte Tilbury. The Charlotte Tilbury here, you can see it's both warm, but this is gonna be like rosier, whereas this is more like bubble gum. So there is gonna be a difference there, but this does come with a gold highlight as well. So I wanted to kind of show you the combination of these two and these two here are fairly similar. So if you have this duo, you're going to have a similar color story for half the shirt to the Tilbury palette. And then this is the Burberry Essentials Glow Face Palette in Fair, uh, Fair to Light Medium. And these are gonna be cooler in tone, but I did wanna share them because again, we kind of have same type of idea with something lighter. You can see how much more mauve this one is here. And then let's put the pink right there. You can see that the pink, the rose in here is gonna be a lot more similar to the one in the Charlotte Tilbury. And that one is just called pink. So slightly cooler, but it's gonna be very similar in color. As for the highlights in here, they're not really gonna be similar, but I did wanna just show them to you in case you have this palette so you can kind of get an idea of how you know this palette would perform kind of the same function. You can see this is gonna be a light pink, definitely a lot cooler in tone and a lot lighter. And this is really more of a white than a gold. Now these two Burberry highlighters are actually sold individually as well, or at least they used to be. They're kind of hard to find now separately, 
but this one's white and this one's pink pearl. This is a classic shade from Burberry. And then last up for comparisons, this is the Highlighter Duo in Peach Light from Tom Ford. Look how similar the shades look in the Charlotte Tilbury. So let's go ahead and swatch these. So here's Peach Light. And you know what? Let's put these on my hand. So these are Peach Light and I'm going to get the Charlotte Tilbury here. So here's the, here's the Charlotte Tilbury pink and the gold. So you can see we don't really have a match with the gold. This is definitely going to be a softer pink. And the Tom Ford's definitely going to be warmer, more coppery in tone. But yeah, I did want to share that because they did look kind of similar in the pan. Next, let's take a look at the new Viseart Le Marais palette. So this is the box that it comes in. Viseart boxes, they do have the names of the shadows down below. And one of the great things about Viseart is they are all magnetic pans, so you can easily move things around. We do have a mirror. This is the Aton Dew size. And you can see these little grooves here. This allows you to lift the pan up. You can just lift it up with your fingers or you can use a spatula. You can rearrange these. They sell empty palettes. You can also purchase the shades separately. So if you hit pan on one and you just want to replace one shade, you can do that with Viseart. So I think that's really great. Look at the color story here. This is a very warm color story, but I was really intrigued by more of the purple shades here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some swatches. So this is a top row and I'm sorry, my arm really does stain with swatching. So it takes a while for it all to come off. But uh, you can see this last shade here is a dual chrome. You've got kind of this shift here. And first up, this shade here that looks kind of like a champagne ivory here is really going to be more of a gold. And it's not even like a super soft gold. It's definitely more of a yellow beige gold, but it's pretty pigmented. Then we have this matte pumpkin orange. It's going to be a soft pumpkin, so a little bit lighter. And then we have this warm brown. It definitely has some golden and red tones in it. And then this shade here is a dual chrome. It's kind of like lavender, pink, and you can actually see like a little hint of green in it sometimes. This here is the second row. And you can see we have kind of like a, a golden pumpkin orange satin. We have a bright purple matte. We have kind of this rich red that actually has like a little bit of shimmer, tiny touch of burgundy in there, but it's really, you know, it's gonna be a warm red, a little brick. And then we have this deep purple here. This is kind of like an amethyst. Like if you're looking at the amethyst jewel, it's just a little bit deeper than that. You can see there's like a touch of red in there that's got a beautiful satin shimmer. And the bottom row here, we're looking at primarily like bronzy browns. So we have a, like a bronze shimmer that's kind of like an aged bronze. We have a warm brown here that runs cooler than the other browns we've seen so far. This is gonna be a warmer, more red, more clay type brown. And then last up, we have kind of this deeper brown, which looks very cool in comparison with these other shades, but it is actually still warm in tone. But you can see you definitely have a lot more black and gray in it compared to the others. So these last three are mattes. So one of the great things about Viseart palettes is they always have a pretty even mix of mattes and shimmers or satin shades. And let's take a look at the demos while we're doing this. So I was playing around a little bit with a couple looks and then we have today's eye look as well. Every shadow in here that I've used, I've used most of these now. I, actually, I might've used all of them at this point, but they all, you know, blend very well. Everything goes on well. The mattes, you know, they're pigmented. So these warmer browns, um, you know, they're definitely warm in tone. You can see that on the eyes. I do wish that they had included like, um, one or two lighter shades than what's in here just for like a, a softer base for me something to blend those out a little bit more but i really do like these so if you're looking for some, kind of those like warm fall shades it makes you think of at least for me it makes me think of like leaves falling and a little bit of purple like twilight skies and things like that this palette is exactly what this means to me so i think it's really gorgeous and I'm so glad that they're now decorating the outside of their packaging as well. So Viseart packaging is ideal for travel. You've got kind of this plastic tray that goes over the eyeshadows to prevent any eyeshadow dust from going out. They're magnetic cardboard palettes. And I just think they're, 
you know, they're compact, you're not wasting any space, they're easy to take with you, and they're fantastic. I think Viseart mats are some of the easiest ones to use on the market. They work really well for me, and their shimmers are great. Sometimes I have had some in the past from them that, you know, haven't performed quite as well, like the Petit Four from last year. These, I have to say, have been excellent. So everything here is performing well. You can put the shimmers on with your finger or a brush. Uh, you know, obviously a finger is gonna give you a little bit more pigment. And you can also use these wet or dry. So I think overall, everything in this palette is really beautiful and I'm really happy with it. In addition, the Aton Dew size here is my favorite. So these are the one and a half gram pan size. So the Petite Pro palettes, some little smaller, they do have one grams. Some of the Grande Pro palettes have had two grams. So, you know, it kind of depends on your preference, but this is like the ideal size for me. And I love how you can mix and match these. I think they just have a lot of attention to detail with things like that. So overall, this palette is a win for me, but I do have a few comparisons. First up, I wanted to take a look at the Chanel Tweed Fauve palette. So this is 03 Tweed Fauve. And you can see you do have some similar shades here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. This like top reddish shade, we're gonna put that right here next to this. You can see it's gonna be a little bit more orange than that in the Viseart. Then we have this golden shade here. And I think that one might go closer with this up here. Yeah, you can see how close that is. It's slightly more orange than the Viseart, but they're pretty close. So it's actually kind of a mix of these two together. Then we have this, you know, purple shade here. Let's put that right there. That's gonna be really close. You can see there's a little bit more brown in the Chanel. Not so, like, you don't really have all that shimmer. And then the Chanel has this peachy shade. We'll just put this up here because we don't have quite the same shade in the Viseart. This pumpkin is gonna be the closest, but we don't have anything quite that that light there. And then this is the Viseart Dark Edit Mattes. You can see you do have some similar shades in here, but for the most part, those in the dark mattes, or dark, dark edit mattes, are gonna be a little bit deeper. So let's just take a look at a couple. This is that orange pumpkin shade here. We're gonna put that right there. You can see it's gonna be a little bit deeper. There's more brown in it. We have this deep purple here. And we'll just put that right there. You can see it's more eggplant. And yeah, so overall, let's just look at this reddish brown. You can see that they're going to, for the most part, these are going to have a deeper, darker base. This is gonna be a pretty close match though. And then this palette came out last year. This is Bijouette. And you can see that some of the shades in here are going to be similar as well. So let's take a look at a few of these. So we're gonna start off with this kind of bronzy shade here and let's compare that with this one here. Those actually, I wonder, those look very, very similar. Like those, they could be the same shade. I'm not sure, but they're that close that they could be the same. Honestly, those are the only two that look that close in the palette, but this brown here, um, that's gonna be pretty close to this one as well. There is a little difference. This one has a little bit more red in there and this one's a little bit earthier, but they're they're pretty close as well. And then I guess we'll take a look at this yellow gold here, but this is really just not going to quite go with any of those there. So yeah, you know, you've got a few shades, you know, in there, but I do think if you are interested in the Tweed Faux palette from Chanel, it, it was just kind of out of your budget or you missed it, uh, this might be a good option to get those colors. So this is Viseart Le Marais. And next up we have the Victoria Beckham eyeliners. These are the new jewel liners and there are three shades. So just like her regular liners, you do have one end with the pencil. You can purchase them with or without a sharpener and then you have a sponge tip applicator on the other end. I find that these work best when you are going to smudge these out for me, otherwise I do end up with transfer. This is the sequin green shade, and you can see it can be a little bit sheer. You can build this up. And then we have Gold Lame here, which is going to be this pretty gold, but this one's actually pretty sheer. So I have a demo I'll show you in a minute where I use these two as eyeshadows so you can kind of see how those perform. And the gold is actually a, a lot lighter than I thought, uh, a little bit more sheer. 
This one here is Night Flash, and surprisingly, this one's actually my favorite. You can see it's gold, but there's like blue glitter in there. I think it's really beautiful. So this is the one I'm wearing today. Let's take a look at these eye looks here. The formula on these feels the same as her other eye cudgels. Uh, very creamy, very easy to use. I think they're really beautiful. Overall, I do like these. Once you smudge these out, let these set for a little bit, they do stay put. And as I mentioned, my favorite one is actually the Night Flash because I love having that black with a little bit of that blue glint. I love navy blue and black together. So that's what this makes me think of. I think it's really beautiful when the light hits it just right. And then following that, I really like the sequin green. It's gorgeous. I think overall, you know, if you've been enjoying the Victoria Beckham satin eye cudgels, you're gonna like these if you like a little bit of shimmer. The only one that I don't love is the Gold LeMay because I love the color, but I feel like you have to go over it a couple of times to really see the gold because the base is kind of a clear base with some gold in there. So it's just, you know, it's not as impactful as I was hoping it to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons here. This is the Chanel Stilo Ya in Or Antique number 48. I'm gonna put that right next to the Victoria Beckham. You can see this one's more metallic than glittery, but you can see it's also more opaque. There's more presence to the Chanel. Now, also one thing I would like to mention, because these do have glitter in them, I would not recommend using them on the waterline because you know glitter in your eye is nothing you wanna mess with. Then over here, this one here, this is the Jones Road Eye Pencil and Onyx. So this is black with some glitter, but this glitter is gonna be silver. So, and this pencil here, you know, it's a traditional eye pencil. You've got the drier formula and, you know, just a different style. And then this is the Chantecai Eye Pencil in Olive Brocade. Uh, you know, absolutely a favorite of mine, but you can see that the greens here are gonna be a little bit different. This is the Victoria Beckham's more sage green. And the shimmer in the Chantecaille is gold, whereas it's more of a soft gold. Like it's a lighter gold, not quite as yellow of a gold in the Victoria Beckham. Now, I also want to take a look at a couple of the crayons from Linda Hallberg, LH Cosmetics. This one here is Vega Flash. And these are older of mine, so mine are getting a little bit drier, but these hold up so well. These are fantastic. So this is the green. You can see it's gonna be a very different, more of a forest green in comparison to the Victoria Beckham. And there's actually not a ton of shimmer. There's actually more shimmer in the Victoria Beckham and the Chantecaille, but it does have a little touch of gold glitter as well. Then we have the Ori Flash, which is going to be, this is actually more of your like yellow green kind of gold shade with some shimmer and it's actually more of a metallic finish. And then we have Levy, which is more of a bronzy gold. So they don't have one that's quite the shade, or at least that I have. So those are my best comparisons for the eyeliners. Overall, if you like the Victoria Beckham satin eye cudgels, you'll probably like these if you are interested in a glitter liner. And last up, I want to take a look at the new Laura Mercier Petal Soft Lip Crayons. So this is in the shade Elodie. Not sure if I said that exactly correctly, but it's kind of your traditional pink. It's a little bit warmer. This is kind of more like a matte lip balm on your lips. So I have it on now, but it did feel a little bit drying. So I topped it with the Gear Long Gloss. So yeah, you know, this is gonna be a soft, warm pink. And you know, it's kind of a basic shade. I think it's a nice lip crayon, but it's not a, a, it's not a love for me. It's an okay product. It really, formula wise, it really makes me think, you know, straight off the bat of the Rose Ink uh, lip crayons, which I actually ended up passing off. <laughs> so I don't have those anymore, but that's what this feels like. It feels fine going on. It is a little bit dry to me. So I just, I don't love it on its own. Um, I feel more comfortable topping it with something, but I wouldn't say it's like super drying and very uncomfortable. It's just, you know, it's just not great in my opinion. So I think it's an okay lip crayon. And you know, if you're in the market for something like this and you see it on sale, it's not bad to pick up, but I wouldn't recommend it for full price personally. So uh, yeah, you know, it's okay, not a favorite.
And last up, this is the Goldfish brush from iHoto. And this is gorgeous. I've used this in a few videos and I've had quite a few requests to feature this with some comparisons. Unfortunately, I don't really have too many comparisons because this is a new brush shape for me. And you can see this is fantastic for finishing powder. So let me show you a quick demo while I talk about this for a little bit. And I'm using this brush here with the A Claude Dew from Chantecaille. This is one of my absolute favorite powders. Well, it is my absolute favorite finishing powder. And this is absolutely one of the best finishing powders. You can use it for setting or finishing. I prefer for finishing because look at this beautiful velvety glow. But regardless, they don't make it anymore. I really wish they would. But this goldfish brush is fantastic. I've used this in other videos with loose powders. So I wanted to use it with something pressed today because it is a very fluffy loose brush. You do want to use it with a, if you're using a pressed powder, something that's not super firm in the pan. This, it's just too airy of a brush to pick up enough product if you're using something that's firmly pressed. This particular brush can come with a silver or a gold ferrule. I chose the silver. I think it's just beautiful, but I loved it with the actual uh, image on the brush handle. So this is the Kinyo brush, which means goldfish, and they're very treasured in Japan. According to Fude Beauty, they actually symbolize prosperity, good fortune, and being blessed with children. So they're also synonymous with summer and they have like different games and festivals and everything with the, uh, with goldfish. <laughs> so this one here has a maki finish on there to get this beautiful goldfish image. And I just think it's stunning. Now the brush itself is incredibly soft and it's just, it's, I, according to them, it's ideal for powder foundation, powder finishing powder, bronzer, and it gives you an airbrush finish. I would say that's definitely going to be accurate here. The bristles on this are made out of gray squirrel and you have a brush length of 173 millimeters. Your bristles are 55 millimeters. And if we're looking at this, you can see this is gonna be a flat round because you do have this pinch ferrule here and that's gonna give it kind of this more like fan shape. And we'll do it here, but look at this. Absolutely beautiful. So the closest brush I have to this is actually the new Sonuji Jumbo Bronzer. So here is the Jumbo Bronzer. You can see straight off the bat that yes, they have a similar shape, but look how much shorter the bristles are in the Sonia G. It's significantly shorter and it's actually gonna be, the Sonia G is a little bit more dense. This is definitely gonna be airier. I mean, look at this here, how this flows on the skin versus the jumbo bronzer. You can see the hairs here are gonna stick a little bit more closely together. It's bundled a little bit more tightly. So for me, this one's gonna give you a little bit more control. It works as a finishing brush. I really like it for bronzer, whereas this is definitely gonna give you that airier touch. I mean, look at this, wow. And it just feels heavenly. So the Sonia G feels fantastic as well but notice how it flows on the skin in comparison. So it's really about which one you're, you prefer, but I think it's great for everybody to have a brush this shape in your collection. So I personally use this exclusively for finishing powder, but there are definitely other things that you can do with this, uh, you know, as previously mentioned, but absolutely beautiful, fantastic brush. And I mean, look at the Maki on here. It's just so beautiful. And I actually found out about this from Ms. Siobhan on uh, Instagram. So if you uh, don't follow her there, I'll leave her account linked down below, but she posted it in her stories. She had purchased it. It was so pretty. I had to go and order it right then. And I've been using it for months now and it's just stunning. Absolutely love it. So that sums up our mini reviews for today. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think of all of these products down below. We definitely covered a lot of different things today and I'd love to know what your favorites are. So please share them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you know, I really appreciate all of your support. Definitely trying to grow and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.